I want to introduce our new weight loss program we're promoting here at the museum. This fellow used to weigh 250 pounds, and he's just trimmed right down to, uh, that's Yorick. Uh, I'd like to kind of bring you up to date. We're going to talk about the latest fossils. We're not going to go back and look at a bunch of old discrest, Hesperopithecus, that kind of thing. I want to talk about what's going on right now in science and nature. And uh, how do we come up? How do evolutionists come up with ape men? Well, let's begin with scripture. Uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, isn't it? We ought to start there always. And Psalm 100, one of the great creation psalms, uh, verse 3 says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It's he who has made us and not we ourselves. Well, that's pretty obvious to me. He made us, not we ourselves. People say, well, what about having babies? Isn't that sort of like creating, giving birth to a baby? No, no, we call that procreation. That's different than creation. All the genetic information is there from the get-go. In fact, that individual was known before the worlds were formed, <laughs> called according to his purpose. Uh, what is the difference between an ape and a human? It's no good talking about evidence for ape men if you don't know the difference between an ape and a human. I believe God made apes, he made humans, he just didn't make ape humans. So that means whenever we look at a fossil that's supposed to be an ape man, if you know what to look for, you ought to be able to quickly tell whether it's a human or an ape. Now, if I say anything that is not absolutely obvious, I want you to raise your hand and have me go through it again, okay? The first difference between an ape and a human uh, that I've listed here are the nasal bones. On an ape, the nasal bones are flat. This is a chimpanzee, it's supposed to be the closest living relative to man. Uh, you see how flat that is? The only thing that protrudes is soft tissue. I want to do an interesting experiment, uh, go to the zoo, get permission to go into the gorilla cage, go up to the largest male gorilla, grab a hold of his schnoz, you can push it all over his face. <laughs> the problem is they get testy. But notice this is flat. You cannot break an ape's nose. There's nothing to break. Now, there are two bones that make up what we call the nasal bones. They're kind of triangular. In a human, they're like a pup tent, like this, see? But an ape, they're like a collapsed pup tent. Same bones, homology is real. Both have nasal bones. Here's a human. In fact, I have an interesting way uh, to tell uh, whether a uh, creature is an ape or not by simply establishing that apes can't wear glasses. You see, you put glasses on the skull, forget about the ears, skulls don't have ears. <laughs> but you see how it slides down the nose here? There's nothing to hold these glasses. Man alive, you put it on a human, it just sits in there like that, huh? <laughs> uh, so the nasal bones, as you can see here, protrude on the human. There's also a nasal spine, you can feel it under here. And that's what you break if you break your nose. The rest is all cartilage and soft tissue. So uh, you can tell right away, if that's the only evidence he had, you could pick out the apes from the humans that fast. But I believe in being more thorough. 